We have reached the end of the module and I'm going to be performing a demonstration. I'll create a smooth organically shaped razor blade handle using guide rails and some of the conditions that we learned from the previous module. Now you can see I've already got the part started here. I have a 2D sketch profile of the center line. This is it. This is a uh, spline that I used. And then several sketches, a couple of sketches here to show the cartridge, where the cartridge of the razor blade would sit. A couple of sketches here for the neck. Uh, probably this is the neck where it goes from a rectangle to a circle. And then a couple more sketches here. This is the barrel where the hand grips the razor blade. And then the point at the very end to terminate the loft. Now, I ran into several problems while building this part. And I thought it would be a good uh, real-world example of how to work through problems and to understand why lofts work the way they work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build the loft, uh, show you how it works, show you how to, to loft to the end point over here. And once we've done that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you some of the problems that I ran into and how I worked around those problems in case you were to run into those problems later on, which you almost certainly will. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this loft. Now, the usual process, adding all the sketches. I'll go over here, it's easier to select. Now adding the neck and the barrel. Oops, select. Not selecting. There we go. And now I'm going to choose this point. This sketch is nothing but a point. It represents the the end of the uh, of the, of the center line, and let me choose the center line sketch. And there we go. You can see the pro profile, the preview. Excuse me. Now, at, this is something I didn't discuss earlier in the other v videos. This endpoint, you can change the the shape of it using your conditions. If you go into the conditions tab, you see the point sketch twelve here open that up and you'll see a new option that we didn't see before this is called tangent to plane so it's going to build it's going to change the condition based on the plane that this that the sketched point sits on because there is no pro profile from which to build it because it's just a point so it's going to use the plane instead of the profile that other sketches would have so I'm going to choose that and you see it already bulged out a bit it's rounded I'm going to change this to uh, let's see let's say five, and whoa that got really that got really fat, so I'm going to change it back to two. Let's see what that does. That looks a little bit better. I'll go ahead and keep it to two. And as you can see, the merge tangent faces was automatically chosen for me. I didn't actually choose that, but that's fine. I like using merge tangent faces. So let's create that, and we got our razor blade handle. Nice and smooth. Okay, so the problems that I was running into when I built this originally, uh, going back into the center line, when I was first building it, uh, this I used this spline, and you see all these these handles. I was messing around with those, trying to get a nice smooth shape while still keeping it straight right here. A spline needs a free-flowing shape. It doesn't want any straight lines. And so what I was trying to do, I was trying to create a straight line right here from this point to this point. And I was using my, te my, my handles to try and get that. And I got a reasonable approximation, but it made the spline very unstable. And I couldn't get the loft to build for anything. And so I, I chucked all that and just built a nice free-flowing spline. And you see that it, it worked, it built it. But by doing that, I kind of seeded control of the shape, especially down here in this transition, when it goes from a rectangle to a circle, that's a very difficult transition. And there just wasn't enough information in the profiles that exist over here to control that without Inventor kind of taking matters into its own hands. And you can see how it built these kind of bumps. Let's uh, open this up so you can see the preview. You can see here this these this material this bumpy material doesn't actually exist in the sketches. It's it's added on 
by inventors is trying to handle the transition from these sketches, from these rectangular sketches into the circular sketches. So I gave up control of that in order to to build this loft. Now I tried a second method of instead of using a spline, using lines and and fillets and and arcs. So I'm going to open that up, and that's this one here. I'm going to go. This will be also be available for you to look at in case you you're interested in the differences. This is called guardrail exercise center line, and Let's take a look at the center line on this one. You can see I used arcs and I got a fillet over here. And this is a line. This is a line that's, so I said I wanted to keep, uh, I want, I was hoping to keep it straight here to, to prevent that bulge in the cartridge area. And then I use, had to use a fillet to transition because you got to have a smooth transition for the center line option to work. And so I had kind of mixed results with this. I'll go ahead and show you what happens with this one. I found out it just wasn't going to handle this transition at all. So I tried doing this. I'll go ahead and build it the standard way. Oh, I need to come over here and do it in the browser. Except for this one. I don't know why it doesn't like that. Okay, so that's a standard. And choose a center line. And you can see it's not building. And why is that? It's because it resulted in self intersecting surfaces. Basically, what's happening, I'm trying to control too much. This straight line and this fillet, it's causing. Inventor, if you could see the preview, it's not showing the preview. Obviously, once it fails, it won't doesn't show the preview anymore. But what it's trying to do is, basically, as it's moving from this sketch over to this sketch, it's basically folding in upon itself, which can't happen. That's a self-intersecting result. So the only way I was able to actually build this was using two lofts, and so I built the I add I started with the third ske sketch. Excuse me, and I'll add these sketches. And again, it doesn't seem to want to accept that one through this browser. That's okay. And choose the endpoint. Oh, and by the way, I, I can I can choose I can change the uh, point also on this one. Okay, and I got that. Let me change this to merge tangent faces, so I don't have all those lines. Nice, we keep that nice smooth appearance. And then I had to do another loft. And what I did was I chose these first two sketches. And then chose the edges. I'm not using the the sketch. I'm just using the actual physical edges that exist because I've already built this geometry. Now you, I tried to add the the center line sketch, and it doesn't like that. It won't build it. So I went back to just the regular rails option, and I allowed it to build the loft itself. I had a seed control over this geometry down here. I tried to merge faces and it, and it didn't like that either. Let me see. I think I see a little bit of a preview. It failed before. Maybe it's going to build it this time. It did. Okay. So that's not so bad. So using two lofts, you don't, maybe you don't succeed building it all on your the first tries and you have to do uh, two lofts. And that's perfectly acceptable. You see a little bit of that transition problem over here. You, you see I was kind of pinched. The geometry is pinched right there. It's really having a hard time interpreting that transition. But we got a little bit nicer of a uh, of a surface here. We don't have quite as much of a bulge like we have in the in the spline uh, razor blade handle. You see how we got that big bulge there over here. It's nice. It's more it's a more smooth appearance. When your loft is having a really difficult time handling the transition from one sketch to the next and you're getting all these crazy uh, effects like the, the bulges that we saw in the previous uh, exercises really the only way to control all that is by using rails and by adding more sketches and so you can see here I went in and I added a couple of I had a four 3d guide rails I chose points in those uh, sketches to connect to the rails 
And you see I added these lines in here into each sketch just so that the, there would be points uh, available for the rail to be able to choose to, to connect to. And then I added more sketches. I added some sketches here in the head, in the neck area, and another one here in the cartridge area. And I found that this really uh, controlled the geometry a lot better. I could probably add another sketch here in between these two. But I think the result is pretty good. So now let's go ahead and build the loft. And I'll add my sketches. And I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to choose the point. The point, uh, it doesn't really work very well with a rail loft. It You can't have singularities when you're using a rail with all the rails coming into one point. But we can easily do, finish that off with a second loft. So I'm just going to uh, loft this one up to sketch 11. And let me choose Merge Tangent Faces. If I want to add any conditions, I can still do that. Let's try it. Let's go without the conditions for now. Go ahead and create it. And that's looking pretty good. You can see it's really handling the, the transition there better. The rails really lock down that shape so it can't do anything too crazy. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and finish the, the shape off. Let me choose the existing uh, edge. And then go into my conditions and choose the tangent to plane and two like we've been doing. And merge tangent faces. And there we go. We have our razor blade handle and it's controlling the shape of the geometry much better over here. So that's that's really your the solution if you're trying to if you're having a problem with the shape deforming add more sketches and use rails that's going to that's going to be your ultimate solution every time the center line solution can only go so far So to summarize I showed you how to manually alter the auto generated guide rails created by inventor and then we discussed how to use a 2D sketch to use as a centerline guide rail. And then we created 3D guide rails using splines. And finally, I led you through a demonstration of how to build a smooth, organically shaped razor blade handle using guide rails and conditions. So on the next module, we're going to be talking about area lofts. This is a specialized form of loft that is typically used to build manifolds.